Good morning, people. I'm off to work. I hope you enjoy the show. This is day one, part two. Well, it's me again, and this is my podcast and my world, where I take you along on an adventure where we get to explore everything and anything that goes on in my mind. Oh boy, is it random? Is it crazy? It's nuts. It's all over the place. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's have a good time. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning, my friends. Hello, I hope everybody is having themselves a fantastic day. Yes, I know, I know. I released a, I released, I made a podcast that wasn't in the morning. I know, I'm so horrible. So last night, uh, first of all, before I get into anything, I have to always say it. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Graham, your host, and this is my world. And this is, you guys are going to get in the, you're going to get a choice. You're going to get a journey here. (laughs) Follow me along. (coughs) Follow me along. Follow along with me. Um, I am uh, taking you along for a ride. That fan is really loud. I am in the truck today. I don't get to drive the truck very often, but now I get to drive the truck a lot more uh, because I gave my minivan to my brother. I know. But you could use it. Yeah, he could use it too. And I have another vehicle. So I just have to be mindful because right this minute, apparently, from what I understand, my brake lights aren't working. So I got some stuff I got to do to my truck to get it to work properly, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so anyways, uh, welcome to my channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, I am on day one of a water fast. So I weighed myself this morning, and I weigh a lot less than I thought I did, 198 pounds. Um, I am not going to be drinking any coffee. I'm not drinking water uh, with salt in it. I ain't going to do anything other than distilled water. Uh, And I'll be keeping track of that um, to make sure that I have at least a minimum of two liters a day. Uh, But I'd like to have, ideally I'd like to have uh, upwards of that. So we're just gonna kind of play it by ear and and take it one day at a time. Um, I don't have any particular goal in mind. Um, You know, I'm not not shooting really for anything in, you know, three days, five days, 10 days, 12 days, maybe at the very most. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know how long I'm gonna do this. Um, As long as I feel fit enough to do it and um, you know I don't get sick and I don't lose too much energy I will be fine I think Um, I have done water fasting in the past a lot Um, it's something that I've I've done on and off um, especially the last couple of months and so um, I kind of I think I kind of know what I'm doing but I just wanted to uh, just kind of want to like take you along for the ride. So today is day one. Day one is the easiest. I won't even know I'm fasting today. That's how easy day one is. Uh, it will be tonight that I'll have the problems. Since I'm I intermediate fast anyways. Um, so that means I go all day and then I um, eat dinner at night and then I go to bed and I fast all night while I'm sleeping and then I'll, you know, for another um, about eight to ten hours uh, during the day and then I eat again. So that's intermediate fasting and um, that's what I normally do <coughs> except yesterday. I was really bad yesterday and couldn't help myself. But um, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, that that's kind of uh, that's kind of what I do. So this will be pretty easy today. 
Um, tomorrow is going to be a little bit more tougher. And, um, and then the third day is going to be a pain in the rear end. Um, I usually get quite grumpy and I um, get a little uh, lightheaded, um, almost like a floaty kind of thing. Um, but uh, it's okay. Um, the more water you drink, uh, supposedly the easier it gets. I've never noticed that. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. So that is the plan. I'm just going to bring you along for the ride. And like I said, right now I'm doing great. I'm absolutely doing fantastic. Uh, not having any, any issues or complaints or anything. I'm just kind of just on my way to work and just chilling and driving and doing this and doing that. And I thought, you know what? Uh, like yesterday I put it up as, uh, as day one. It was last night. It kind of was day one because I was done with dinner and I stopped eating. And so my fast kind of started. That's, that was, you know, after I already had my, my final cup of coffee and my everything like that. So the hardest part of fasting, especially if you go extended fast, so five days or more, uh, is coming down from the fast. And I have heard so many things about, um, you know, the proper way to, to come off of a fast. And it just more times than not, people end up gaining all the weight back that they lost because when they come off the fast, they go back to what is considered the American diet or the typical American diet. And I can see that. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, my wife and I, though, we're not on a typical American diet. We haven't been for a couple of months now. Um, we, uh, we are a low carb um, high fat diet. Um, now when I say high fat, I'm not talking drenching everything in oils and grease. Um, I'm talking, we don't pay attention to it. We just make sure that we don't buy low fat crap. So if you take a look at, um, next time you're in the grocery store, take a look at low fat yogurts and low fat stuff. Um, it's low fat but so that the flavor is still there, they usually add the sweeteners and the sugars to it uh, to compensate for the fact that there's no or very low fat in it. Um, you know, it's just, we're, we're, tra we're, we're trained to believe that low fat diets is the way to go. Meanwhile, they're shoving more carbohydrates and sugars down our throats. I mean, I dare you to go someplace like Starbucks or any, any coffee place and try to order a coffee that isn't super, super sweet. You know, you tell them you want half the flavor and it's still super, super sweet. Um, it doesn't matter what coffee shop you go to. They're all that way unless you're ordering Americana, um, which, I mean, let's be honest, it's drip coffee. That's all it is. So, yeah. It, uh, it, it, you know, coffee itself is, is totally loaded with sugars, you know, and we're eating, you know, but how many meals a day? We eat lunch and breakfast and dinner. And they tell you breakfast is the most important day or meal of the day. And it's like, okay, well, you're fasting all night long. Let's break it with breakfast. Um, breakfast, the most important meal of the day. So I beg to differ. Half the time, I don't even feel like eating breakfast. Like, I feel like I have to force myself to eat breakfast. Now, everybody's different. Everybody is, is um, you know, on a different schedule. <coughs> you know, we're, our bodies, we train it to eat breakfast at a young age. And if you go without breakfast at a young age, um, you know, you feel like you're missing something. I remember being in, in uh, high school and uh, middle school, and I just wouldn't eat breakfast. I'd wait until lunch. I've always kind of been that way. I, 
I don't know. Breakfast foods, they first of all, they just seemed so gross to me. Um, I'm not a big fan of eggs and sausage and bacon and hash browns. And I'm just not into all that, you know, the, and it's so confusing too, because I know that I'll eat, if I eat a breakfast, okay, a standard IHOP style breakfast. So either pancakes or crepes or any of that kind of stuff. I know that within probably about an hour of eating that, I'm tired. I have no energy. I want to lay down and take a nap. I feel sick to my stomach. I feel like I immediately after I need to go to the bathroom and, and do a number two. I mean, I just, I, I feel horrible, absolutely horrible. And, um, you know, I, I just don't feel right. And then you have lunch. Usually lunch for me, I, I usually grab something light, like a salad or, or it, you know, when I do eat lunch, you know, I grab something small and light. So then that way when dinner comes around, I'm ready to eat a nice sized dinner, you know. But you look at the, the typical American diet and really look at it. Look how much carbohydrates <coughs> are in it. I mean, it seems like every meal you either have potatoes, or rice, or pasta. I mean, you go into almost any recipe book and there's potatoes, rice, or pasta. And it's almost every recipe is that way when it comes to dinner foods. And um, it's shown that uh, people with, with high, um, high, high blood sugar and are type one or type two diabetic, uh, the doctor's like, well, you need to bring down your sugar intake. You need to bring down your carbohydrate intake. You need to be on a low carb, low sugar diet because this is what's causing your, you know, your thing. And everyone's like, oh, it's the donut or I'll just cut the sugar out of my coffee. But then they'll still eat their potatoes or eat their rice or, or you know, their uh, macaroni and cheese. And the, the thing is, that's where the problem is. It's the breads. It's the, it's all of the freaking processed grains and it is unfortunately the rice and the potatoes. So, you know, you just, you gotta, uh, you gotta cut those out. I mean, here, you know, the, the thing is, is how it works, okay? And it's, it's quite simple. Um, if you're constantly, and I talked about this last night, if you're constantly feeding yourself and you're constantly putting food in, when you have a reserve, you just store it. You don't um, you, you don't uh, uh, burn any reserve. You, you're just constantly storing reserve. So you have to you have to uh, cut back. Um, now you can cut calories out and still keep constantly eating if that is what works for you. But for most people, metabolism just slows down. The natural way or the way we used to eat before, you know, grocery stores came around, it'd be one meal a day. You would eat in the dinner or at dinner time, or you'd eat two meals a day. You'd eat breakfast, most likely not, or you would eat, you know, uh, dinner. Um, and so food wasn't always available uh, to be able to, to eat all the time. And this uh, whole myth about, well, eat, you know, six small meals a day. Well, you're constantly grazing. You're constantly feeding the, the, the fire and you're never, ever using your reserves. So to use your reserves to get rid of the fat, the most and the, and the best idea that I've come across, and I'm not no damn professional, I've just done a lot of study and a lot of research and a lot of common sense, as from what I can see, is you do some sort of fasting, skip breakfast, or do what I'm doing right now, which is called a water fast, where I only consume distilled water. Um, and then that way, you are burning those resources. And here's the funny thing. Your body actually burns the fat 
um, fuel source way better than it burns sugar. But it burns sugar, there's highs and lows, peaks and valleys. Um, you eat the sugar, a few minutes later, you're on a peak. Have you ever eaten a candy bar and then had a headache right afterwards? Yeah, you're on a peak, you're high up. And then when, uh, when you, as you burn the sugar, you start to drop and you drop and you fall because then all of a sudden you're out of the out of the sugars and you're you're down on the, on the ground you you've hit rock bottom and um, and so constant like constantly eating it's maybe higher or lower peaks but you're up and down 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 but when you're fasting um, it's solid because the, the fuel source is always readily, readily available. It's always right there. So um, you're always able to um, eat, you know, constantly. Um, your body's able to have fuel all the time and you're able to, to constantly burn. So it, it actually comes out to being more of like a level plane. And um, yeah, it just, you're, it's stable, you're stable. You know, people are like, oh my God, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself because you're, you know, you're gonna um, uh, go into starvation mode. Well, no, not really. As long as you have reserve, you're not going to go into starvation mode. Starvation mode is when the body starts eating itself, uh, taking proteins and breaking proteins down uh, to use as fuel. And everyone's like, well, that means your muscle mass. Well, not at first. Uh, at first, you will end up burning excess fat or um, a skin or chemicals that are in your body or um, if you have uh, cancer kind of things or polyps or some sort of, I don't know, stuff that's not supposed to be there, your body's gonna end up burning that first before it burns your muscle. <coughs> I mean, let's look back. You know, um, thousands of years ago, when we were hunter-gatherers, if there was no deer around to eat or kill, or no bunny rabbits, uh, or you know, it was winter time or whatever, your body is going to do whatever it can to boost the energy so you can hunt. But it's going to save your muscles because it knows it needs your muscles for that fight, um, and that'll be the last thing that it burns, very last thing it burns. Usually, you know, from what I've observed, you don't end up losing muscle uh, until your body fat uh, index is really low. Um, like, we're talking really low. And it's like, uh, you know, another thing that was pointed out to me, uh, look at the Holocaust victims. They went a long time with no food. Um, and they were all skin and bone. But look at their skin. A lot of those guys, you know, were pretty big dudes. They were all, you know, field hands and they worked in, you know, uh, big factories and uh, in the fields and stuff. They were big guys. And they have, in those pictures anyways that I've seen, none of them have a lot of loose skin. Uh, like we do today, you know, you look at The Biggest Loser and almost all the contestants on The Biggest Loser, you take their shirt off and they are just riddled with loose skin. And um, I think a lot of that's got to do with the way it burns, your body burns and uh, is looking for, um, looking for the fats it, or looking for the, 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 the proteins and stuff. So it, it'll just kind of continue to, to process and eat the, the nasty stuff, um, whatever it can. Um, but I think, I think your muscles are like one of the last ones to go. So anyways, this is it. This is day one. All right. So tomorrow's podcast, uh, I will give updates, um, and photos at the end, um, that are more than what there is now. And then that way, um, you can see the progression. So, all right, y'all, I love you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll talk to y'all very, very soon. 
This has been a Graham's World broadcast brought to you directly from Graham's Mind. So stay tuned because there's more to come. <laughs>